I'm Rich Crampanis. Welcome to Shore Sports Zone Saturday Week 7 Highlight Show. Great to have you with us for more high school football action from around Monmouth and Ocean County. Four games on our show menu this week. Thanks to Reach Your Potential Training for sponsoring Shore Sports Zone's coverage of Rumson Fairhaven High School. Let's get started with a fantastic matchup in Lakewood. The Piners putting an unbeaten mark on the line against RFH, whose only loss came to St. John Vianney in a rainstorm. Opening drive of the game for the Bulldogs, Michael O'Connor finds Brian Hess. Hess picks up 24 yards, and it would lead to this. O'Connor to Elijah McAllister, back of the end zone. He's got it. What a great job of staying in bounds. The Bulldogs strike first, it's 7-0. Lakewood driving, Amir Tyler so tough to bring down. Look at him, keep those legs churning. A 21-yard gain for Amir Tyler. The Piners get it to the 15-yard line. They're threatening to tie the game, but Zaire Jones makes a mistake, and it's Mike Caruso. The INT and a whole lot more. Look at Mike Caruso go. He takes it 87 yards. What a pick six by Mike Caruso. You'll see that on the top plays on Sunday on ShoreSportsZone.com. 14-0 RFH. The Bulldogs defense did a great job of containing this dangerous Piners offense. Mike Ruane dragging down Zaire Jones for a loss. Then back on offense, O'Connor to John Kingdon. 14 yards. John Kingdon has made some serious plays this year. It's 21-0 at the half. RFH in control. Third quarter, after a field goal and a stop by the Bulldogs, O'Connor is picked off by Amir Tyler. And Tyler, he can do it all. 25 yards, pick six. The extra point is no good. It's 24 to six. Got to give credit to RFH. They turn right back around. O'Connor to Mike Ruane for a 14-yard gain. And then Brian Hess. Does he get across the goal line? Yeah, he's got it. Seven-yard touchdown that made it 30 to six. Late stages of the fourth quarter, you know, Amir Tyler is as impressive an athlete that you will find not only in the Shore Conference, but all of New Jersey. This one-handed catch is ridiculous. Man, let's take another look at Amir Tyler going up and showing why he is a Division I prospect. I made it 30 to 14. All RFH has to do now is run out the clock and Michael O'Connor will do just that with the keeper here. And the RFH Bulldogs get a 30-14 win on the road at Lakewood. 30-14 is your final. Rumson Fairhaven hands Lakewood its first loss of the season, but the Piners still have plenty to play for a couple of weeks from now. Get ready for Point Pleasant Borough taking on Lakewood for the B-South crown. Point Borough is unbeaten. Even though Lakewood has this loss, they're still unbeaten in B-South play. That's going to be a great title showdown. As for RFH, the defending Central Jersey Group 2 champs, are once again primed for a deep run in the postseason. Coach Brian Batchelor's team is now 5-1 and one on the season with an impressive win on the road at Lakewood. We're real excited to give you a long look for the first time at the Shore Regional Blue Devils. They were at South River. Now, this program's got some serious history. Check out Drew Pearson and Joe Theismann, former South River Rams. But it was Shore Regional with a Hall of Fame effort in this game. Right out of the gate, Jack Britton, Great run down to the 21-yard line. It's fourth and five. Matt Pinnell rolling out. And this is one tough customer. Look at Pinnell taking on the defender. Wow. <laughs> you got to love a QB who's not afraid to lower his nose. 16 yards. That's a great touchdown run. 7-0 Blue Devils in front. Mark Costantino really spreads the wealth among his players. Doug Goldsmith. The familiar face of Shore Regional football, the six yard score makes it 14 nothing. And I wanna shine the zone spotlight right now. Let's learn a little more about Doug Goldsmith, an outstanding lacrosse player in addition to all his football prowess. His favorite athlete, one of the best of the National Football League, the Carolina Panthers great linebacker, Luke Keekley. And I don't know about this, chugging a water bottle in two seconds. We may need to get that on camera. And we asked Doug if he could have dinner with anybody from the past. He chose the great martial artist, Bruce Lee. A reminder, you can see all the zone spotlights from our media day at iPlay America. Just head over to ShoreSportsZone.com. Back to the game action. The Shore Regional defense continues to be one of the best in the Shore Conference. Here's Jack Britton with a great INT. Shore goes right back to work on offense. It's Doug Goldsmith on the screen. 
Does he get in? It looks like he does, but the official's right there. They mark him out at the one yard line. Next play, Devin McLaughlin cashes in. It's 21-0. South River certainly overmatched in this game, but give them credit. The Rams producing a nice highlight here as Mario Nigro finds Michael DeSanti. So South River gets on the board to make it 21-7. But Shore was in complete control of this one. Pinnell to the air. Connor Rempel, that's a fantastic catch. It would lead to a short touchdown run to make it 28-7. And the highlight of the game for sure comes on Josh Campy's punt return. It's a line drive and he goes untouched. Wow, 65 yards for Josh Campy. Shore Regional had a 38-7 lead at the half. They go on to a 52-7 win at South River. Shore Regional improves to 6-0 on the season. The final two games of the regular season will be a great test for Shore. Remember, they're the defending Central Jersey Group 1 state champions. They have to get past Point Beach on the road and then a home test against Asbury Park. I think that's going to be a tremendous game two weeks from now. And don't forget, Shore has their Thanksgiving Day matchup with Rumson Fairhaven. So three games left on the schedule, not including the postseason, should all be great tests for the Blue Devils who roll to a win on Saturday afternoon at South River. The Toms River East Raiders on the road taking on Freehold Borough. And what a great start for the Colonials. Jake Curry finds Jamel Smith Rush. He's out of bounds at the 25 yard line. This drive is capped off. They go to Smith Rush on the end around. Jamel Smith Rush is getting more and more touches in his senior year and he's earned them. He's a playmaker. Five yards makes it seven nothing Freehold Burrow. And Jake Curry was on fire through the air. Here he finds Matt Curcio, a 14 yard scoring play. Makes it 14 nothing Freehold Burrow. The Freehold Borough defense was tenacious throughout. This is Xavier Madera. Great tackle for a loss here. But let's give credit to Toms River East. Their defense was able to create two turnovers in the first half. First, it gets started with this fumble that's recovered by Jay Gilligan. And then I'll let you be the ref right here. Curry with the pass to Smith Rush. It looks like he didn't hold on to it long enough. Maybe incomplete. Uh-uh, we got a live football. Great awareness by Louis Gallo because he scoops it up, makes a big return. Another turnover for Toms River East. They couldn't produce any points out of it, but good play there by the Toms River East defense. The Freehold Borough offense not deterred by those two turnovers. Here's Ashanti Worthy, one of the top rushers on the Jersey Shore. Go to shoresportszone.com stat zone to see his numbers. Worthy to the 27. And then Jake Curry. This is a name to watch out for. Matt Krause, only a freshman. He's been making plays here the last few weeks. A 13-yard touchdown makes it 20 to nothing. Jake Curry was 11 for 11 through the air in the first half. Here it's a little bit of a wounded duck, but Jamel Smith rush. That's three defenders all over him. Smith rush wins the battle. Wow, 21 yards makes it 26 nothing. One more great play by the Freehold Borough defense. Todd Berger with the sack. It's going to force a punt. And in the late stages of the first half, how about a fourth Curry TD pass? This one to Ashanti Worthy. It covers 29 yards, 32-0 Freehold Burrow at the half. It was 39-0 heading into the fourth quarter. Toms River East able to put up 20 points in the fourth quarter against the Freehold Burrow Reserves. But it's the Colonials with another impressive victory by 25 at home over Toms River East. Freehold Burrow picks up the win on Saturday afternoon. Thanks to Tom's Ford for sponsoring Shore Sports Zone's coverage of Keyport High School. Great game in Keyport. The Red Raiders and Spotswood went back and forth. It was homecoming at Keyport High. First quarter, the Red Raiders strike first. Chris Hogreave to the air. Cody Young's got it. 32-yard scoring play. It's 7-0 Keyport in front. Spotswood would draw even in the second. Sean O'Connor finds Marlon Hart. This is a 30-yard scoring play at the half. We've got a 7-7 ball game. Third quarter now. The Chargers turn to Joe Hayford, and Hayford gets loose, and there he goes. 31 yards for Joe Hayford, 14-7 Spotswood. But here comes Keyport late in the third quarter. Hogreave to Sky Blanks. That's a huge pass play, and on the first play of the fourth quarter, the same drive, Hogreave from short range. He's in the zone. We're tied up at 14 apiece. 
and then things really escalate in the fourth quarter. Keyboard seizes momentum as Desmond Underwood almost gets in there. Great run down to the one yard line. No worries, they go back to Desmond Underwood. He finds the zone from a yard out. We've got 8.56 to go in this football game. It's 21-14, Keyport by seven. But Spotswood would come right back, tie the game at 21, and then Hagreep picked off by Marlon Hart, and this is the big play of the game. 56 yard, pick six for Marlon Hart. It's 28-21, Spotswood with 6.50 to go. Keyport would have a couple of chances to draw even now in the final minute. It's hurry up offense time. Great catch here by Zach Ox. The Red Raiders are on the move and they're in the red zone, but Hagri is picked off by Nick Moore and that seals the deal. 28 to 21 is your final. Spotswood improves to five and two on the season. For Keyport, the Raiders are now three and four. They close their season with two games at modern day next Saturday and then home two weeks from Saturday against Keensburg. Certainly an opportunity for coach John Pachkowski's team to get a winning record in 2015. Those should be two good ball games for Keyport. And there's no question this Keyport team is much, much improved from last year. As you saw in the highlights, they went up against a good Spotswood team and hung with them the entire time. But it is Spotswood winning by seven at Keyport. Can't thank everyone enough for their support of ShoreSportsZone.com. We appreciate the kind words, the emails, the texts, as we continue to try and take Shore Conference Sports to another level. And a special thanks to our team behind the scenes. We've got a great crew who just love bringing you high school football action. That'll do it for this edition of ShoreSportsZone.com's Highlight Show. I'm Rich Crampanis. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week with more high school football action right here on ShoreSportsZone.com.